last home game today. It's the day many have dreaded, especially fans, and many can't believe it's finally happened. Kevin Nathan's here with more. Kevin? Thanks, Lisa. You know, the players didn't want to leave the ice. The fans, they didn't want to leave the building today. The Whalers' last day in Hartford packed as much emotion as any in their 18 years in the National Hockey League. The Whalers in Tampa Bay, and Hartford on the board first. Glenn Wesley makes it 1-0 in the first, and the score would stay that way until the third period when the captain, Kevin Deneen, isn't it fitting that he would score today? How about that? Makes it 2-zip. Whalers hold on, 2-1 to one your final. Afterwards, they skate around the ice a couple of times, paying tribute to the fans they love. You know, the guys knew there's still people out there, and, you know, guys just didn't want to let it go, to tell you the truth. Guys wanted to, uh, you know, get back out there and uh, give another wave. Um, I don't think anyone expected, the, you know, the last day in Hartford here to be this, this tough on the guys. We'll have much more reaction from the Whalers players, and we'll meet a man who's been with the Whale since day one in Hartford. That's later in Sunday Sports Replay. Lisa, back to you. Okay, Kevin, and a mixed bag of emotions today for the thousands of fans who showed up to pay their final respects to the Whalers. For fans and business owners alike, it's a cold day in Hartford. Lauren DeFranco is live at Coach's Sports Bar with more. Lauren? Well, Lisa, a lot of fans came here tonight like they do after a lot of Whalers games, but the mood among fans was different. Now, the owner of Coach's told us he thought it felt like a funeral in here tonight, all because the Whalers are leaving town. In the final moments of the final game, cheers and tears pour out of the Civic Center. The Whalers win as thousands of ardent fans lose. As the buzzer sounds, Joanne Porteza reluctantly faces the reality that a long chapter of her life is over. This season I've been to all 40 plus some away games. I've been coming here for 18 years. I wish it wouldn't end. I want more. I want more hockey. Here. I want more whalers to stay. I want them to stay. A sentiment shared by many. We're all kind of down and uh, been coming to the whalers for a long time, so uh, leaving this building is uh, kind of a big letdown. Indivisible against Carmanos. Some people are bitter, even angry, at owner Peter Carmanos, who after months of negotiations made a decision. A decision that some believe is all about money and little about sense. The whalers are Hartford's team. Him and Bettman have basically stabbed us in the back for dollars. Mayor Mike Peters holding court during intermission gave fans a glimmer of hope. We're going to give it one more shot. One more shot. we got 700 jobs here. We have uh, directly uh, associated with the whalers, you know, service jobs, people in the Civic Center. People like John Locks, who manages the Civic Center cellar restaurant. He's fearing layoffs and lots of them. We won't be able to keep most of our waiters and waitresses on other than the daily ones because without the night events, you know, they, they'll be looking somewhere else. The Whalers have contributed probably close to 10 to 12 percent of our total gross sales, so it's actually a very huge number with them leaving town. Now, on a positive note, the owner of Coaches did say he believes his business will be resilient to the loss of the Whalers. As for the impact it will have on the city, well, we'll have to wait until next season to see exactly what that impact will be. Reporting live from Hartford, I'm Lauren DeFranco. Now back to you, Lisa. Okay, Lauren. And Mayor Mike Peters told Connecticut News today that he may file suit against the Whalers to keep them in Hartford. Also tonight, the beating of a corrections officer has... Yeah. And knowing that... You know, it's not like they want us to leave. You know, they were, you know, begging for us to stay. And it's just a, it's a hard thing to swallow as a player. You know, a lot of tears in people's eyes and, uh, you know, just, just a lot of emotion from people that uh, I've known a long time that never seen, uh, never seen their emotional side before. And, um, you know, that, that made me much more emotional than I thought I would be. And I think that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll remember this. So will Whaler fans. It's a day they will never forget. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Sunday Sports Replay. I'm Kevin Nathan. Tonight, we'll hear from Tiger Woods on his record-setting Masters. We'll check in on the Red Sox, the Yankees, and the Mets, plus profile someone who worked on the ice for the Whalers' first and last games. But first, it was a last game like none other, a day filled with as much emotion as any in the Whalers' 18 years in the National Hockey League. The Whales' final game in Hartford against Tampa Bay, and fans saying thank you. Glenn Wesley says thank you very much from Robert Cron on the pass. A couple minutes in, the Whalers with a one nothing lead. Fans loving it. And Sean Burke doing the rest, robbing Rudy Poshek. Also a Tampa Bay goal disallowed. Then in the third. 
Isn't that justice served? The captain, Kevin Deneen, with what would be the game-winning goal. The Whalers hold on to win their final game in Hartford. The final score was 2-1 to one afterward. The players skated around the ice a couple of times, paying tribute to their great fans. I guess the reality is just kind of starting to set in on us, and, uh, you know, there's, there's disappointment to go around with everybody, and I guess we just wanted to acknowledge what a big part the fans have been to us. The support that uh, they gave us today was, uh, I mean, it brought tears to everybody's eyes, and we wanted to go out on a high note. I know we've disappointed them in a lot of ways, but uh, it hasn't been from lack of effort, and I think today we wanted to show them a good effort, and they, they in turn, showed us... Uh, you know, why they're the greatest fans in the league. Well, they fooled all of us, and they were, uh, they, I honestly believe they, they understand it wasn't the players' fault. And, and uh, you know, this is their hockey team, and they're going to miss it. You choked up out there at the end? Uh, yeah, but uh, my wife always calls me a big baby, so I had to fight the tears back. Well, we're a team that, you know, basically choked coming down the stretch and uh, basically gave away our, our chance to make the playoffs and a chance to... Um, you know, play some more home games and still we go out there and, you know, they're just, uh, I think our fans are a little too forgiving on us. Uh, but as a player, it's great. You know, Sandy's right. The team did choke this week. But what I'll remember most is how choked up we all were at the Civic Center today. A win for the Whalers, but a huge loss for Hartford. Losing isn't in Tiger Woods. I don't know what I'm going to do without them because I've come to so many games that keeps me occupied keeps my mind off of all other problems, and I enjoy it so much. The partying ended with the end of the third period. The cheers turned to tears at the sound of the final buzzer. They'll tell you it doesn't matter where this team goes from here, they'll always be remembered as the Hartford Whalers. In Hartford, Sherry Einhorn, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And it was a big news day in Spurs finale in what appears to be their last game ever in Hartford. It was quite emotional for them and the Whalers themselves. They missed the playoffs again, but on their last day, beat the Lightning 2-1. to one. The Whalers will go out. Things much more serene at the map. We just want to say thank you from all of us. God bless and thank you very much. It was a salute to a packed house of loyal Whaler fans. A 2-1 win over the Tampa Bay Lightning to end the season. A sellout crowd of 14,660. Third period, 1-0 Whalers and captain Kevin Deneen scores his 19th of the season. And then just after 4 o'clock, Sunday, April the 13th, it was all over. But the fans wouldn't go home. They didn't want it to end. A standing ovation for the whale. Incredible amounts of uh, support and very emotional game today. Uh, you know, uh, they just showed the class that they have and um, the support that uh, they gave us today was, uh, I mean, it brought tears to everybody's eyes. And we... The day the whalers left town, the day Tiger Woods won the Masters. <laughs>
This is Sports Final Edition with Joe Tessitore. What a day to just open your eyes, turn your head, and simply observe. I saw grown men cry in public today. I saw young boys stand aimlessly in disbelief. I saw women throwing gifts of roses and players throwing gifts of equipment. Most of all, I saw Hartford's heart fully exposed. This was the day Hartford's hockey music died. Peter Carmanos bought it up three years ago. Now he's packed it up three years later. They're headed nowhere except out of here. After 18 NHL seasons and a playoff push that just didn't budge, we're left with this fleeting final seconds of a regular season finale. hadn't planned anything. I think we, right up till this morning, we were expecting to, this to be such a big and important game from, in our playoff drive. I mean, that's kind of taken away from it. We just weren't sure what we should do. And uh, you could see it was kind of a cluster out there. And, uh, I guess we just wanted to acknowledge the people, all they've done for us uh, as, as a group. I'll tell you, that is one enthusiastic, uh, supportive crowd when, uh, when uh, you know, when <laughs> we need some help. Uh, uh, they were there for us, and this has got to be one of the loudest buildings in the league. Uh, and uh, uh, they certainly proved that again tonight after, uh, uh, you know, helped us uh, get along like they did against Buffalo last week. There's no doubt there's, uh, there's a core of fans here that are, that are as good, if not better, than any core of fans in the NHL. Um, and, you know, uh, they know their hockey and they know how to support a team and, and all those other things. Unfortunately, again, uh, economics is something that's, uh, that uh, I don't totally uh, understand and I, and I don't think every, everybody does. But just as far as the loyalty and, and the, uh, you know, the closeness of, of this group of fans with these players is, uh, is, is probably uh, number one in the league. Well, this was one of the few major league sporting events I've ever been to in which the game itself wasn't the main focus. Nonetheless, they played and played hard. Fans were there, and they were the stars of the day against Tampa Bay. First period of the last game, Whalers history, Glenn Wesley. 1-0 Hartford. Nice rip on the drop pass, and they were toasting the Whalers. The fans, they did it all day long, just 24 seconds into the third. The captain, Kevin Deneen, his 19th of the year. Two zip whalers and high fives all around for the captain. But Tampa Bay ruining the shutout. Dino Cicerelli beats Burke, makes it 2-1. to one. This was Hartford's day. The whalers would hold on. They win the finale. Very emotional day at the Civic Center. Hartford tops Tampa 2-1, to one, and here's Kevin Deneen on his game-winning goal. Well, I didn't even realize, to tell you the truth, until they, they told me out there I wasn't, wasn't thinking about that. I was actually trying to get to number 20, and my teammates were doing all they could to help me out, and that was a, uh, a nice feeling. So I guess uh, uh, now that I look back on it, it's, uh, you know, people would say it's appropriate, a guy that's been here the longest, and. Uh, uh, I guess scored the most goals, uh, so on and so forth. It's a, uh, it's an honor. It's nice to get it. Here are your final numbers on the season: 32 wins, 75 points. As far as the history is concerned, only three winning seasons in 18 years. Last time over 500 was some seven years ago, and no playoffs now for five straight years. Of course, the most deceiving final number of all was 14660. That was once again, thanks to the Whalers front office, the published sold out attendance. Trust me, you could tack another two grand to that number. Each and every one of you had something to say, whether it be giving thanks or giving heat, Whalers fans weren't going easy. I flew in 3,000 miles to see this game. I flew in from Los Angeles to see the last ever Hartford Whalers game. It's just kind of a sad day in Hartford. I wanted to be here, help the fans say goodbye and everything. What are they going to do? They're going to leave. The, they're going to leave the state now for for forty million dollars. They're going to sell all these people out in Hartford that that have, have, have been going there to Hartford and buying their tickets. 
tickets are at 93% capacity. All right? I agree and they're, with and they're selling out. You, you can't roast, I'll fight you anytime. So it's a sad day. I know I had tears in my eyes. I'm not ashamed to admit it. And uh, we'll miss the Whalers. Long live the Whalers. I, I love the players. Uh, I think the uh, players are on their way to something a lot better. And it's unfortunate that Hartford can't be a part of it. And I think Hartford will uh, dearly miss this team. And I think uh, the words I have across my back uh, kind of sum it up for all uh, 15,000 of us. It's unfortunate that they can't be around. You gonna miss them? Yeah, I'm gonna miss them because they're they're my team, and uh, and I really like them. <laughs> Much regret for the Hartford Whalers fans. I feel bad for them. Much more on the Whalers still ahead on Sports Final Edition. The fans will hear what the players have to say and the respects they pay. Former voice will tell you what that's all about. And one final tribute to the franchise. Still ahead on Sports Final Edition. Well, Tiger Woods. That moment in Whalers history is etched into many memories, and so is the voice of Rick Peckham. For 11 years, he was the TV play-by-play -play man bringing Whalers history into your living room. He now has the same job with Tampa Bay, and he also has plenty to say about the situation back here at home. We cannot ignore the reality of this situation. Therefore, the Hartford Whalers will be leaving Connecticut at the end of the season. When the finality uh, sets in, the announcement is finally made. It's, it's hard to believe sometimes, and I think what really gets you is the reaction of people afterwards that, uh, you know, maybe believe that the team would not move or, uh, or what the situation was, but I think once the announcement was made and the, t and the fans uh, realized that the team was going to be gone, I think that the reaction is what got me. I've talked to a lot of friends here in the area of little kids, and they reacted very badly to it. They don't know how to take it. Check by McDermott. They try to move it in front. Lemieux on the back end. He scores! Love Lemieux! With a high backhander at 5.55 of overtime has won the series for the Montreal Canadiens. Well, that was uh, just such a tremendously exciting time because there were the Whalers in the playoffs and stretching Montreal to the, the seventh game, and we all look back on it in the years after that and said, Jesus, they just won that seventh game in overtime. The Rangers weren't particularly tough. Montreal beat them in five. They went on to the finals. We could have been there. I remember in 86, early in that uh, playoff series with the Canadiens where the Whalers were making their move and you got the impression at that point that they were going to be able to extend the Canadiens and really make it a series. Kevin Deneen scored the winning goal in a game in the Civic Center where he just blew around Larry Robinson on the off wing and as soon as he started to make his move at the blue line, you saw Robinson got a late start. You're like, oh, my God, he's going to be in on Wah, and he scores. And <clears throat> that was probably the most emotional moment for me. Taken back by Denis. Denis charging in. Robertson got a late start. Denis scores! I got the puck, and I just caught him flat-footed. And just, uh, you know, fortunately, you know, he's such a, a big guy. You know, I just kind of held him off there. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I think more of it was he just uh, caught him uh, flat-footed and just uh, just went around him and put it upstairs. My experience, um, just getting out and being able to meet so many people in the area and, and watching people grow to, to enjoy a Kevin Deneen from when his career started, a Ray Ferraro and Ulf Samuelson and guys like that, and to see how popular they became in the community and grew with the team, that uh, I think that's going to be what I enjoyed the most here. Great thoughts from Rick, but how great is it to see that Kevin Deneen vintage soundbite? But when we come back, more Whalers wrap up. Time for the fans to hear just how much they are appreciated. The players turn the table next. <laughs> well, the media voted the fans one of the three stars today. And that's what this day is all about. Whaler fans, you don't deserve any more pain for the rest of your life. This loyal group of diehards is indeed the real deal. Sometimes the exchange between athlete and fan, it's 
lost in the modern muddle of the pro sports scene, but it was obvious the Whalers players showed plenty of respect for the Whalers fans. It's been a little overwhelming. I think there's people that come up that, uh, uh, like us players, uh, the Whalers are, are take up a, a lot of their lives and, and mean so much to them. And uh, when you have that taken away from you, it's, a, uh, it's an awful feeling. And uh, I found uh, lately that it's been pretty hard on all of us just trying to, trying to get through us and a lot of mixed emotions. And uh, now that it's finally here, uh, I don't think there could be any better tribute to, to our fans and the way they performed again tonight. I know we've disappointed them in a lot of ways, but uh, it hasn't been from lack of effort. And I think today we wanted to show them a good effort, and they, they in turn showed us, uh, you know, why they're the greatest fans in the league. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty uh, heavy, you know, coming off and, and seeing. I mean, little kids that probably you wouldn't think would even understand what's, you know, what's taking place. And, and I think I can only put myself in their shoes. Huh? What, what a frustrating feeling it would be. Uh, I grew up in Detroit, and you know, not being able just to, to take my kids or to, to go see a hockey game, a professional hockey game, whenever I wanted to, and uh, that, that can be frustrating. And uh, so I just, uh, I'm just glad that uh, for the most part we're all leaving with, uh, you know, a really good feeling about uh, Hartford. You know, the people who are getting hurt are, uh, you know, the kids out there. You know, it all started yesterday in practice with the, the open practice and, and uh, you know, just coming out of the rink after that and, you know, just seeing the kids today here as we're skating around, you know, waving at everyone that, you know, they're the people who are getting hurt by this because, you know, you see the kids running around wearing your jerseys and, you know, they're crying and, uh, you know, that's tough to, that's tough to see and uh, you really feel for them because, you know, like, you know, everyone was a fan once. That's it for this week's SFE. We'll be back. Our NHL franchise won't. The players are still rich. The owner's even richer. The governor has his title, and the commissioner now has his way. The only ones that truly got hurt are you, the fans. Here's one last look at your Hartford Whalers. Good night, everybody. The most sincere eulogies of all time. Over 15,000 Whaler faithful said goodbye in their own special ways, whether frustration over Carmanos or the more common simple thanks for the memories. Their message was loud and clear. It was only fitting that hometown hero Kevin Deneen led the players on and off the ice for the last time. He will always remember one thing, the fans. As a group, I tell you, that is one enthusiastic, uh, supportive crowd when... Uh, when uh, you know when, when we need some help, uh, uh, they were there for us, and this has got to be one of the loudest buildings in the league. Uh.
What an emotional day. Well, last probably you wouldn't think would even understand what's, you know, what's taking place. And I think I can only put myself in their shoes. How huh? what, what a frustrating feeling it would be. Any time I've gone out in the last since the announcement's been made, and you know, kids come up to you and, and they ask you why. I, I, you know, there's just there's really no answer for for me to give kids, and it's a. Uh, it's a tough thing, I mean, especially for the kids, the adults at least understand the economics of the thing. So after 22 years of existence and 1,420 games in the NHL, the Whalers are history. As far as the on-ice history, it's not a very pretty one. Three winning seasons in 18 years, none in the last seven. One playoff series victory in nine attempts, no playoff appearances in five years, and more disappointments than any group of fans should be expected to endure. This past week told the story of the Whalers' Hartford history. Controlling their own destiny, they performed miserably against Ottawa and the Islanders to kill the fans' hopes for one last playoff bid. Fans that turned out at 93% of capacity throughout the season. I heard that at times the players wondered aloud why some college basketball teams got more favorable media coverage. That happens to teams that win. One Boston hockey writer has always referred to them as the forever 500 Whalers. If only they had been that good.